Wahiga Mwaura is joining me live from Lagos in Nigeria. Let's find out. Wahiga, is there anything you can learn from where you are? Thank you so much, Trevor. And of course, good evening from Lagos. I don't just want to talk about Lagos traffic. I actually want to show you what it looks like. It's right here, uh, right here behind me. And this is one of the busiest routes out of Victoria Island, which is a financial hub here in Lagos. Those are ordinary Nigerians trying to make their way out of the city. And of course, to understand the challenges of traffic in Lagos, you have to look at the numbers. 21 million people live in Lagos, 3 million cars on the road every day. Compare that with Kenya, 3.5 million people live in Nairobi, and so you can see the differences there as well. Lagos makes Nairobi's traffic problems look rather small. And to help you understand this better, I did a special report, and here it is right now. Lagos, the heartbeat of the Nigerian economy, the home of Nollywood, Africa's most vibrant film industry, and a bridge for many to their dreams. People come to Nigeria's fastest growing city looking for opportunities. But what they are guaranteed to find is traffic. Lots of it. Every day, commuters leave the mainland to work on the island, which is the financial hub. And they exit in the opposite direction in the evening, leading to perennial traffic jams locally known as go slows. If you don't wake up around maybe 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock to beat the traffic, my dear brother, hey, no way. You can't meet up. Most times I sleep on the island. I go, I go home by weekend because I, I live on the mainland. Well, let's do a simple comparison in terms of traffic between Nairobi and Lagos. Nairobi has 3.5 million residents, but every day 7 million people from other counties pass through Nairobi. In terms of losses, that has been estimated at 15 million Kenya shillings every day lost because of traffic. And it's one of the top three worst places to drive in in the world. But Lagos, it's a much bigger city. 21 million people call this place home. And 3 million cars are driven on these roads every day. In terms of losses, that's been put at over 13 billion Kenya shillings per year. And three hour traffic delays here are quite commonplace. Even on a Sunday, the traffic police are hard at work as millions of Lagosians navigate their way in and out of various places of worship. The sound of car horns provides road users with a familiar soundtrack. But this is Nigeria, so even the worst of situations provides an opportunity. The constant presence of traffic jams has opened up new opportunities for hawkers who can sell you anything under the sun from the comfort of your vehicle. But what is it about Nigeria's largest city that makes it such a traffic nightmare? I think traffic is very synonymous with a mega city although small, very small in size, but uh, in uh, population, it's very large. And then as we have, you know, the population being large, then we have more vehicular population too. Traffic is being caused by um, portals, traffic lights, and then some of, some of, uh, some of it is um, reckless driving. Federal and state governments have come up with several solutions to help alleviate the traffic gridlock. One is the bus rapid transit system, which was inaugurated in 2008 and uses at least a thousand buses to move more than 200,000 passengers daily. They are 30% cheaper than other modes of transportation and operate from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. What we have done is to engage you know, the middle class for them to drop their vehicles and use the BRT. We have recorded about 20% 20, 20 of uh, the middle class dropping their cars. But of course, we've not been able to reach the A band of the society. Lagos is the most unique city in Africa because if there's too much traffic on the roads, then there's another option, the waterways. Imagine headed for a business meeting in a suit, in a vessel like this. Well, I'm told that's what some people actually do, and I'm here to get a feel of that. According to research published by a local newspaper, about 22% of Lagos land mass is covered by this lagoon, cutting through and linking up different parts of the city. While some Lagos residents have embraced the use of waterways to move around the city, most of them are yet to buy into the idea because they consider the waterways unsafe and underdeveloped. In addition, Lagos has commenced the construction of a light rail system under a public-private partnership. 
When completed in 2022, this rail-based network will cover seven major corridors of high commuter traffic demand within and beyond Lagos. Until then, Africa's largest city can only keep crawling. Wahiga Mwaura, The Monday Report. Well, Trevor, there you go. There you have it. Uh, three interesting things I want you to note. The, f the first thing is, the first thing is that, the first thing that I want to tell you, actually, Trevor, is that, uh, I beg your pardon for that. Uh, what I want to tell you, Trevor, is that uh, in terms of traffic, the Lagos authorities are trying to do everything they can, in my assessment, to sort the traffic issues here. But 100 people enter this city every hour and less than half leave. So they're dealing with a growing problem. Secondly, in terms of solutions, when I mentioned 2022, probably in Kenya, you're thinking about politics and an election. But here in, in uh, Lagos, they are thinking about um, they are thinking about the light rail train that will be ready by then as well. And those are some of the solutions that I'm really looking forward to listen to with Mashima Kapombe at our town hall. Meanwhile, it's a few minutes after 7.30 here. Still lots of traffic. People still heading home. That is the situation in Lagos.